Hey everybody, Jace Allen here, Rum Runner Guitars, and welcome back to our third part, our multi-part episode on designing and building guitars using CNC machines. Okay, so here I am in the workshop with the CNC machine, and we're gonna put our G-code files into the laptop, and we're gonna cut out our guitar body that we designed. So all that said, we're gonna take our quarter inch end mill down cut, or up cut, excuse me, this is an up cut bit. This is what we're gonna use to cut our holes with, and we're gonna put it a half inch up into the column. Okay, there we go. And now we need, uh, this is Swamp Ash that I got from a company and I will post a link in, I think, Oregon. Uh, this is a 15 inch by 20 inch blank, one and three quarters inch, finished both sides. Uh, it's, it's nice to start with a piece that is basically ready. So, We want to cut our registration holes, so what I do is lay the piece down, and I like to kind of measure from the edges of the rail here to my board to make sure that it's relatively square. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be pretty close. Okay, I've got my drill, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a fairly large diameter bit so that I can countersink these screw ends. And we'll just go in a little ways. Just enough to create a space for that head of that screw to go in. And then I'm gonna drill through. I like to always use pilot holes when I drill holes. So we'll do that on the G sender here. And uh, we'll use the Y, X, Y, Z jog control here. And what I like to do is get it just about inside of the material. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a piece of paper. So we're gonna set this piece of paper right there. We're going to jog down with the Z in precise mode. We're going to slide the paper and we're going to lower the Z. Oh, see? It caught. See how the paper is not moving? And then we'll move the Z up one, one click. This is in precise mode. And it, see the paper will move out. Okay. It's, so it's just almost touching. And then move your and what you're doing is you're aiming down so that when it gets to the edge of the block it's right in the middle of the bit see that oh, it's like right in the middle of the bit and then you do the same thing on X want is you want that bit to be right in the middle One more okay 
See that, how it's right in the middle now? So it's right in, right on the corner of that block of wood. So that is where our XYZ home is going to be. Okay. So then we'll come over here and we'll do zero all. Boom, there you just set your home. Okay. So now we want to take our uh, files. I put them on a USB key and uh, you want to import your file into uh, G Center. Okay, so we'll do load file and then we're going to grab the pinholes that we had, that we created. Remember that? And open. Okay, and then there's your pinholes. And uh, you're ready to go. You're ready to, to do this, uh, cutting these holes. So I'm going to put the boot, dust boot on, and we're going to cut. So we'll do that. Okay, here comes the <laughs> do or die moment. Uh, we're going to cut our pin, pin holes into the block, uh, everything's zeroed out. So let's see what happens. Uh, we're going to put some hearing protection on and we're going to start our vacuum and we're going to start our, uh, our router and we're going to hit start, let's see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, I ran into a little bit of a problem. So what I was trying to do is drill the guide holes for my pins all in one pass. So it went through the material, inch and three quarters of material, and into the wasteboard three eighths of an inch. Requires a fairly lengthy bit. Uh, my downcut bit, actually all my bits are about two and a half inches long, which leads to the problem that if you don't leave enough of the bits sticking out of the bottom, then your collet hits the material, bottoms out, hits the material, and then starts to burn. So that's what I ran into. The collet uh, bottomed out, hit the material, started to burn it. Luckily, it did that on the last, the last plunge into the, into the material, and it came up, moved over, kept cutting. So my registration guides... Uh, actually worked and I was able to finish this uh, piece and uh, it, I got it done so and it was all way off center on the on the material also because I had uh, on the design that I in the tutorial I said I was using a 16 by 20 piece of material when in reality it was more like 14 by 20 so I was so dangerously close to the edge on the top that it almost the guitar body almost didn't fit the material but i lucked out and i ended up with a usable uh stratocaster body and i noticed that uh the neck pocket is a little a little loose not terrible but not quite the way i want it so 
what I did was I pulled the perfect neck pocket, is what I called it, from another file that I was working on. And so I, I'm dropping that in, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna upload this to the drive so that you can you have a copy of that. And I also noticed that my neck pocket depth was a little shallow, and so I'm going to I'm gonna redo that. Actually, the pickup pockets seemed pretty shallow in the one that I did. So I'm going to make those a little deeper as well. Everything else turned out really good. It's it's a I think it's a usable body. I might have to reroute the uh, pickup pockets and the neck pocket on that one, but I can use it. I could probably use it for whatever testing or whatever. So okay. So now, long story short, brings me back to the drawing board, and so I've got some feedback from some viewers. And what they recommend is to only drill two sets of holes instead of doing one set of holes all the way through the body blank into the waste board we're going to do two separate passes for holes we're going to mount our body blank to the waste board with screws to hold just to hold it in place we'll cut the first two sets of holes and this is going to be the back of the you start starting in the back and so you cut your two holes and you, and you only have to go maybe three quarters to an inch deep that way your bit's not going to bottom out if you've got if you don't have a lot of z travel it'll still work for you and then you're going to cut those two holes first you're going to cut the back you're going to remove the screws take the body blank off you're going to rehome everything reset your z home to the wasteboard surface cut two holes into the wasteboard for the pins, the uh, three-eighths of an inch, and then set your pins, flip your board over, and set it on the pins with those holes that you drilled into the back. So that way you don't have to have a long bit, you don't have to have a lot of Z-travel if you're cutting those holes, and it actually I, you know, I'm filming this after I did all this and it actually made the registration a lot more accurate. There was very, very little, you know, movement from the front to the back. So that being said, you, if you don't have a lot of Z travel and you don't have long bits, you can probably cut your body outline in two passes halfway through on the back side and halfway through on the front side. I haven't done that yet because I I don't want there to be like the little ledge or whatever that you have to sand off and so I do I do the body profile the body shape last and I do it on the front and I use uh, tabs it leaves little pieces of wood so that it, it doesn't the you know the piece doesn't fall out and that seems to work but you really come close to bottoming your the collet of your router out so i think i'm going to try it with uh the two-sided cut for the profile but but we'll see about that but anyway that's how it was recommended to me to do the, the pinholes i did it it worked and so the rest of this tutorial is going to be explaining how to set that up and then how to continue on with this updated neck pocket. And then we're gonna go right on into cutting everything out. So we, I eliminated my guide holes and we're gonna recreate them. And we're gonna put one right in the center. And we're gonna do a quarter inch. So it radius is an eighth of an inch. Okay, so now we have a guide hole right in the center. So now we want it somewhere around in here. So we're going to measure over, take our measuring tool, come from the middle all the way over and we'll see whereabouts we want to be. Probably right in there. So about 9, 9.6. We'll call it 9.6 even. So then uh, somebody had recommended to me to use this nifty feature 
which you know I'm not a pro at this software, so I'm I'm just kind of doing things the way I know how to do them. And somebody came up with a really good uh, solution to creating copies of these uh, guide holes spaced out. So what we're doing is we select the guide hole. We come over here to array copy and then we want to set the row to one and the column to two and then we want to come down here to offset and we want to type in 9.6 which is our our distance and then hit copy and as you can see 9.6 is a little far I think Let's try, let's try nine and a half. That seems a little better. And then you copy it again, or uh, highlight the middle one again. And then you come over here and you do the same number, but in a negative, you do negative 9.5. And there it is. I think that's a good spacing. So now you're even from the middle. Out. And then you can get rid of this center, center one. So let's see if we, let's see if we're accurate. Take our measuring tool, go to the center, come here. We're nine and a half inches. Measuring tool, center. You can see it snaps to your center, and we're nine and a half inches. So okay, so we're good. So that's an easier way to do the guide holes than I was doing them. We're going to create two separate G code files: one for the guide holes that we drill into the back of the body blank, and a file for the holes that we drill into the waste board. So we want to select our guide holes. We want to do tool paths. We want to do drill, drilling tool path. And we want uh, yeah, 3 8 of an inch. It's a little deeper than 3 8 That's fine. Uh, retract above cutting start depth. Um, peck. Peck. Yep, use peck drilling. OK, we're good. Peck depth is an uh, eighth. Looks like an eighth. That should be OK. And then, uh, okay, so we'll call this drill waste board. Okay, so we calculate that. Okay, we go back to our 2D view. These are still, the holes are still selected. You want to right click on one of them. And you want to do copy to other side. Okay, so now when you flip up here and you toggle, to the bottom side, there's your guide holes. So now click, um, select both of those, hold shift, select, select. Tool paths, back to drilling, inch, leave all that the same, and we'll go bottom guide holes. Calculate. Okay. And then we need to. We need to modify our depths of our pickup pocket. So we want to come over here to pickup pocket, double click. It's set to, looks like 5 eighths. We're just going to go 0.7 on this. We're going to go 0.7 on this. Calculate. And then our neck pocket. We have to recreate that one because we, I, dropped in a new, a new one. So we will get rid of that old one, and we'll go to pocket tool path, quarter inch end mill, and then our cut depth. It was kind of off by. Let me see our modern Stratocaster. neck pocket depth 
5 eighths. So 5 eighths is 0.625. So I had it set at, well, I don't remember because it's it's gone now, but I had it set to, I think it was 6, 5, 8. So it should have been a little bit deeper than 5 eighths, but it was not. <laughs> So we're going to cheat a little bit. I did 6.58. It was a little shallow. It was maybe by a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to go... .658 plus... What's a sixteenth of an inch? Point zero six. That might be too much. That's probably puts us at the point 0.7. I'm afraid that might be too deep. Let's go 6.8. Oops. So we'll do point 0.68. 6.85. How about that? And then we'll call it neck pocket. You can call it neck pocket revised just to keep things straight. I mean, we eliminated the old toolpath anyway, so. Okay, so we'll reset our preview. Preview all sides. And we'll see how this looks. Oh, and everything is off. Oh, I know why, because I changed material. <laughs> so we reset the preview and we recalculate everything. So we right click, we recalculate Recalculate, recalculate all, and you can see it'll move everything because I changed my material size to the correct material size because I had 16 by 20. And my furnace is kicking on again, so I'm going to move my mic closer. And okay, so now one more error occurred. I don't know what the error is, but we'll try to preview all sides and see what happens. All right, that looks pretty darn good except we have oh pin okay our pinholes drill waste board top neck okay pinhole those that one can go away we don't need that one and then the neck pocket should actually go up probably up in there so it looks good we look we look good it looks like a good depth everything looks pretty good tabs are there and uh, okay I think uh, I feel pretty confident that, uh, that this is going to look good so the next step will be to create our tool paths again like we did before where we go through and we select everything and save it to disk um, get my little USB key out here and we're going to save everything to that and go back out to the garage to the CNC machine and we'll see if uh, we did everything right this time. All right now we're out in the garage again. We've got all our files on our USB key. We'll put that in here and get our files up on the computer over here. And what we'll do is we'll load the first file which is going to be the bottom guide holes. Okay. And then we'll we got our uh, blank down on the work surface and it's kind of even up where we want it and then what we're going to do is I'm going to just put a couple screws in to hold it because we're going to cut our back first and we'll have the guide holes we'll take that off we'll cut guide holes into the work surface so we can put our pins in and then we'll flip the blank over cut the front side and then we'll be done so do a couple pilot holes our screws. Okay. And get 
our home set up. And I usually do my home on uh, lower left. And then I do a little trick. I put a piece of paper down. here on precise and then kind of go down until the paper there see you can see that the paper doesn't pull out and you just up one click so that it pulls out so then now you're pretty much right at the at the top of the work surface and then you can narrow over until you're right at the corner Set, you want to zero all, and now that's that's your home home base. So you've zeroed everything out. So we're ready to cut just the guide holes. And this is a down or up cut bit. Uh, use the up cut bit for the guide holes, so it pulls the dust out. And uh, so we'll do that real quick, and then we'll reset everything and do the cutouts for the back side. Then you go to your Z again, and that'll set it right there. That's perfect. And then you load your next file, which will be bottom. And that'll cut the uh, tremolo block hole uh, the, in the pocket for the, the springs in the claw, and then a rough cut of the belly contour. And then we'll switch the bit out again to the round uh, uh, eighth inch end mill with the round nose, and that'll do the finish work of the belly cut, and then we'll flip it over. Okay, we're back in the garage. It's actually been a few days. I had to go off and do my regular life, <laughs> but I let the router stop right where it was. 
uh, and I, you know, didn't reset my home or anything. So it's all, should all be able to pick up right where it left off. If you have to, you can rehome it. Cause I mean, this is where it was home to. So you have to do your, your uh, cut job in, you know, over a few days, then you know, you can just, as long as this doesn't move, that's where it started. That's where it stopped. That's your home. So now uh, we did the, so we're doing the back first and we did the, you know, the back routes and the rough out for the belly contour. So now we're going to switch bits to an eighth inch ball nose bit and we're going to do the, the fine, you know, the finish 3D of the belly cutout. Two things, always make sure enough of your bit is sticking out so that your collet doesn't bottom out when it's cutting because uh, the belly contour is quite a deep cut and my eighth inch bit is pretty small. Actually, I would recommend uh, instead of the eighth inch diameter ball nose, I would get an eighth inch bit with the quarter inch diameter shaft on it that's a little bit longer. I actually ordered one. It isn't here yet because everything's back ordered. So you get that, and then you don't have to use the adapter either in your collet. So that makes things a little, little easier. But anyway, for the time being, I got the eighth inch. So that's what we're gonna use. Back in G sender, and we wanna connect to our machine. So we're gonna power up. Connect to our machine. And you can hear it. I don't know if you heard that, but it makes a noise. It lets you know that it's connected. And uh, for some reason, none of this is zeroed out. And it could be because I rip, uh, minimized G sender and then we came back into it. So these are not zeroed out. So you're going to have to re zero everything. So zero all. Okay, so you're back, you're back home. And then we're gonna load our file, which in this case is 3D finished bottom. And there it is. Okay, so the only other problem, as you can see, our bit is not down where it should be. So we're gonna fix that. And what I do is I'll just take a, some kind of a straight edge instead of doing the paper on something like this I'll just take a straight edge and the straight edge allows you to see the bottom of the or the top rather of the material and you just kind of walk it down until you're pretty confident it's where you want it. That looks pretty good there. So we're all zeroed out. We're all set. Everything's in position. Put our dust boot back on. Okay. Carrying protection is always good. And we'll fire up the uh, vacuum. And then we'll turn the router on. And we hit start job. And then we cross our fingers because there's always a chance that things will go wrong. Okay, so there you go. It's running. We're going to let it go. It's got maybe an hour, maybe less. Then we'll flip it over, start on side, front side, side one, whatever you want to call it. And uh, hopefully everything will line up good and we'll have a good guitar body when we're done.
the belly contour uh, finish uh, pattern finished. <laughs> and uh, so router stopped at home. So I took the bit out. And as long as you don't, again, as long as you don't mess with your, your home position in uh, uh, G Center, you can move the router because we're going to move it out of the way to get to the board to flip it over. We'll use our controls in G Sender down here, jog control. We can set it to normal. Okay, we'll just move that out of the way. You can see belly contours all cut. And then we remove our screws. take our board off and you can see need some sanding on this part uh, I think my bits starting to go that's why it's so rough but you know you'll have to do some sanding anyway so there we go we got our that sides good there all routed out so now we got to send our machine back home and this is where you want to be careful because if you hit zero any of those that say zero you lose your home position and everything's messed up. So you want to make sure you click the blue ones. Go to, go to, go to. So this time we're going to go to uh, X, Y, Z. And there we go. We're moving back to our home position. Okay. Now we're at home. So now we're going to take our uh, quarter inch upcut bit that we used to cut our holes with. Our guide holes it's actually a beautiful day today I don't know if you can hear the red winged blackbirds outside or not but this finally a nice nice weather here in Michigan okay so now we want to set the Z travel the Z home to the bed. So this time we're going to do our paper trick again. Throw some paper in there. Use the precise jog mode. Z down until it just grabs that paper. There it goes. And then jog it up until it releases the paper and we'll call that bottom. Okay, now here's where you want to zero your Z, but only the Z travel. Okay. So now you want to come over here to your load file, and we're gonna grab this drill waste board file that we had created that basically just drills uh, a little better than three-eighths of an inch deep holes in the waste board. Uh, I don't think we need to put our dust boot on for this, so let's uh, fire up the router and hit start job. Bit goes back home, holes are drilled, so we can jog away. Oops, put it in normal mode. There we go. Let's try that way. Okay. okay, so these are our holes. We'll take our metal pins, put them right in there. See if they fit. Now you want to make sure 
you orientate this correctly. This is the way it was in. Uh, we had our we had a drill or a screw in the lower left and a screw in the upper right. So you want to make sure because you're going to flip it horizontally this way. <laughs> Look at that. That <laughs> fits perfect. So, all right. So here's your front. And you'll notice that because we homed this to the spoil board, the bit is down quite a ways. So you want to raise your Z up to clear your piece of material. XYZ. Actually, you might want to take your bit out first because it's going to try to go home to the board. And we're going to change bits anyway to a down cut. I use up cut bits for the holes because it pulls the dust out, it tends not to burn that way. Okay, so now we can go to XYZ. <laughs> It does funny things, this long mill, because you noticed it, it jogged up before it settled, and it travels beyond its, you know, path, and it bumps, because we, we don't have limit switches on this early model of uh, long mill, so you want to keep that in mind, so you, you could see that it bumped. But it doesn't matter because we're gonna we're resetting our our Y home anyway. I got a little blue painter's tape there so you can tell when it's about to bump into its limits. Okay, so now one thing to keep in mind if you're using a two and a half inch bit, your board is one and three quarters, and you're gonna be Going down about, you want about two inches of your bit sticking out of the collet. So you can see where mine's worn away. That's about how far up I go. But you want to make sure you get the bit sticking out far enough because it will bump into the top. I finally got a three inch bit that just came from Amazon, but it's a, a up cut. And I like to use the down cut bit on the guitar bodies. Okay, so that's set. And we'll set our Z home again. Oh, let me go precise. And it's not gonna be right at the corner because you're, you know, when we homed this before, when it was flipped around, this piece of wood is obviously not completely square. So it's not sitting on the actual core, but don't worry. It's your, your you know, that is home. So X, X, Y, or X, yeah, X, Y home. So you should be all set. So we just want to make sure we don't set the bit too deep. That looks pretty good. That looks about, I'll drop it down. Okay, so we zero out our Y, or Z, rather, <laughs> Z. Okay, everything's zeroed. We're going to use the dust boot for this because this cut's going to take quite a while. And we dropped it on the floor. Okay. Okay, so now we want to load our next file, and it is going to be the top. And there you go. So we're doing we're doing our neck pocket, our pickup pocket, our pocket for the bridge, control pocket, jack pocket, 
3D rough on the arm contour. Then we'll change bits and we'll do the 3D finish for the arm contour, which will make a nice smooth, fairly smooth. The bit's kind of, kind of. I think at the end of its life, maybe we'll throw a new, a new bit in there. And then we will come back and put another uh, quarter inch down cut bit in and do the profile. So let's let her go. Okay, so, so we uh, finished our uh, first cutout of the top, and so now we have to change the bit back out to the uh, eighth inch ball nose so that we can do our arm contour finish. <laughs> Okay, there we go. And then we once again lower that should be good. zero Z, leaving everything else alone. We come over here to load file and we want 3D finish top open and you can see that's right there and then we put our boot back on. Try to collect some of that dust. Okay. Fire up the rabbit. Everybody, Jace Allen here. I would love to show you the rest of the video. I would really love to, but I can't. I had some issues while recording, and for some reason, when I sat down to finish editing this, uh, the finished body cutout scenes were gone. I uh, didn't realize it until I sat down to edit it, and by then the body's already cut out. I'm moving on to other things, so I'm going to keep keep going. I'm going to call this the finish. So I'm just going to kind of show you what uh, what the actual final process is. You, you, you know, it just cut out the arm contour, did the finish on the con on arm contour. The bit will come back home. You've seen this already on the, you know, on the video. The bit will come back home. You, you raise the Y up, you pull the bit out, put the quarter inch uh, down cut bit in, tighten it down, set the home on that, and then pull up the body contour or profile file, and then start everything up again, run that, it'll go through and cut out the outline with the tabs in it. As you can see here, it'll cut those, those tabs. That holds the piece in place because otherwise, if it just cut all the way down in, then when it got to the last part, it would shift 
and then it uh, binds up your bit and it's you know kind of a disaster this is what we ended up with and you can see the arm contour finish is a little rough and I think that's because uh, I used the eighth inch ball nose bit my router has a quarter inch collet quarter inch uh, you know whatever opening for the bits and uh, uh, you have to say if you use an adapter for the eighth inch bit and sometimes it starts to slip out while it's cutting and it makes these grooves these uneven grooves so I think that's what was going on it kind of did it on this part here too normally that's really smooth I'll, I'll show you this is what it normally looks like that pretty good so you definitely get a better you know it'll definitely be better with a, a good bit so I'm either going to use I got a uh, eighth inch ball nose bit but it has a quarter inch collet or a quarter inch shaft so you don't have to use that adapter so then the chances of it slipping out as it cuts uh, is a lot less Pretty much nothing so and then I'm also going to try a quarter inch ball nose I don't know why I'm using the eighth inch I thought it would give it finer uh, a finer finish but uh, I think it's just the the ball nose that's you know because there's not a lot of surface area touching the material so that's what gives it the good finish so I think I'm going to try that but uh, in the end you end up with a nice Stratocaster body so I'm um, thanks for everybody for watching uh, this series it was a long series uh, I learned a lot uh, through it and uh, I bought some more gadgets I got myself a little lapel mic here so I can hopefully sound better uh, still can hear the furnace in the back though because we are down in the dungeon so <laughs> And uh, um, I learned a lot about the process of making the bodies. So hopefully I can refine that and maybe down the road we can revisit the Strat, uh, strat style and do another video with any updated tricks or whatever. And now I'm going to move on to uh, people had requested an SG people requested necks I think the next video I'm going to do is for a neck for the strat and then I want to do a telly body um, so and then the Les Paul also and the Les Paul will have uh, a set neck so we'll have to do the neck on that too we'll do the neck on the um, Telecaster and I'm going to do separate videos of the round over uh, edges with a router and then assembling everything fitting parts whatnot and then probably painting painting and finishing so we'll be we'll have a completed guitar I'm also going to do because the uh, these holes were shallow I think a little shallow I'd like them a little bit deeper I'm going to make a template that I can just set over this and take my hand router and go through and make them a little bit deeper so I might do a video on that too. So, cause you know, other people out there might run into the same problem where they cut it all out, they get it done, it looks beautiful. And it's like, ah, oh, no, this thing should be an eighth of an inch deeper. So we'll show you how to do that too. So lots to look forward to here on the dungeon. So I hope everybody sticks around and I hope you uh, hit subscribe because that helps, helps my channel. Um, I'm pretty new, but uh, I'm gaining uh, subscribers uh, almost a daily basis and got lots of views. And so I'm going to try to keep bringing you content to help you build your own guitars, service your own guitars, tune them up, play them. Yeah, just, we're just going to talk about them. We're going to build them. We're going to make CNC versions. I'm going to do a series on building a guitar completely by hand with power tools not not hand tools I'm not gonna get that extreme but we're gonna do one with just power tools so if you have minimal tools if you don't have a CNC machine you can still build 
a guitar. We're going to talk about templates. We're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. So it's going to be pretty exciting here down in the dungeon. So stick around and thank you for tuning in.